Ring final circuits. Whether you love them as an example of post-war ingenuity, you hate them for their extra testing and seeming double standards in the regs, or, like Gary, you're just driven incandescent with rage when people call them ring mains, they are very much a part of the landscape for electricians. Even if we all agreed to stop installing them today, there must be millions of them already in the wild, and therefore they will be around for years, probably decades to come. As part of our ongoing Q&A feature, we answered a question relating to the use of a 16 amp junction box on a ring final circuit, and I explained why this wouldn't be acceptable. Now a viewer by the name of Daddy B, I'm assuming that's not what's written on his birth certificate, asked if we could produce a video demonstrating the principles of how current flows in a ring final circuit using a real life experiment. So we have. I've constructed a ring circuit here using these double sockets and surface mounted patrices sent to us by BG and they really were lovely to fit, plenty of room in the colour coded terminals in the back and the great styling on the front right down to the little screw cap covers here that you can see. Now you'll notice that between each socket there's a couple of power resistors, one connected to the line conductor and one connected to the neutral. These are just here to mimic the resistance in the cable that we'd find in a real life circuit. Now even this won't give a perfect representation of a real ring final circuit as each one of these is the same value of 0.22 ohms which means that in the real world this would represent a ring final circuit where each piece of cable would be exactly the same length between sockets. However, it's going to demonstrate the point nicely for us. The legs of the ring are wired back to this BG consumer unit and connected into this RCBO here. Now, I haven't done the same with the CPCs to the sockets. They aren't necessary for this demonstration and are only there for safety. Now I'm going to plug in a two kilowatt load in different positions in the circuit and look at how the current splits. So we'll expect the current drawn to be two kilowatts, so 2000 watts divided by 230 volts, which is about 8.7 amps. So we're gonna connect our load up here. First of all, this socket is the midpoint of the circuit, electrically speaking. So that means that the resistance of the conductors here in this path to the consumer unit is the same as the resistance of the conductors in the other path. Let's take a couple of current readings. We're gonna use this rather lovely Metrel MD9235 to measure the current. It's actually capable of measuring power in unbalanced and balanced three-phase systems, uh, but we're gonna use one of its more basic features here and just measure the current flowing in each leg of the ring. So we'll turn that on. So at the bottom here, when we power this up, we are measuring, let's have a look at that. We're measuring 4.27 amperes. I'll just bring in the uh, meter cam here and we'll have a look at that. You can see here that we are measuring somewhere in the region of about 4.3 amperes. And then if we go up here, you can see that we're measuring again somewhere in that region. We've got 4.2 amperes there. So we've got just about the same amount of current in both of those legs and add them together. And we've got about the current that we were expecting. Now it makes sense that both currents are the same because from the midpoint of the circuit to the consumer unit, the resistance of the conductors is the same on each path back. So the current is split evenly between the two legs. But watch what happens when we plug this load into a different socket. So we're gonna plug it in down here instead now, and then we're gonna measure the current and watch what happens now. If we measure the current in the bottom first, we can see there, if we connect that up, and again, we'll just bring in meter cam now to have a look at this. You can see that the current has increased here. We're now in the region of 5.4, 5.5 amps, somewhere around there. And if we go and measure the current in the top leg of the ring here, so we'll connect that up there and measure that, you can see now that we've got 2.8 amperes. So we've got less current flowing in the top path now. So that's quite interesting. We can see that the current is not splitting evenly between the two legs of the ring. So you can see we've still got pretty much the same total current, but we've got more in this leg and less in this one. Why is that happening? Well, look at it from the current's point of view. From here to the consumer unit, there's only 0.44 ohms of resistance in the cables. Whereas if they go this way, they've got 0.88 ohms. Now it always makes me a little frustrated when people say that electricity follows the path of least resistance. It doesn't. It is split in inverse proportion to the resistances. What that means is that most of the current will flow this way, where there's less resistance, and less will flow in that direction. Let's do it again. This time we're gonna put it in the socket that's right next to the consumer unit. So we're gonna put it there. What's going to happen now? Well, let's find out. We'll power up the load. We'll measure the current flowing through the bottom leg first. And again, if we bring in meter cam and have a look at that, 
you can see now we've got about 7 amps there, 7.1 amps flowing through the bottom leg of the ring. And if we look at the top, once again you can see we've got about 1.4, 1.5 amps flowing through that one there. So still roughly the same total current as we had before, however now the vast majority of the current is running through this leg of the ring back to the consumer unit. So now we've connected this closer to the board, the resistance offered by the cable is a mere 0.22 ohms and the other way it's 1.1 ohms. So the vast majority of the current is going in this direction here and therefore the cable has to carry the most amount of current. So in Appendix 15 of BS7671 where it talks about locating socket outlets to provide reasonable sharing of the load around the ring, what we sometimes call balancing the legs of a ring, this is what is meant, trying to keep the current in each leg roughly the same so that one side doesn't have to carry significantly more current than the other. Now at this point we can look at this and think, well, that amount of current is not such a big deal. But let's load it up a bit more, hashtag more power, and see what happens. So now we've got about 5 kilowatts connected to the circuit, and let's measure the current flow. We'll pop that there, bring in meter cam and have a look. And you can see there we've got over 16 amps is running through this leg. So as you can see, the vast majority of the current is running through here. Not a crazy amount of load, all I've got plugged in here is a kettle and a toaster, but clearly more than 16 amps flowing. And that's the reason we can't use a 16 amp junction box to extend a ring final circuit. There's only so much we can do to be sure that the legs remain balanced. We can't assume the current will split evenly between the two legs of the ring. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.